the best equation to use for this problem is the force equation due to a current in a B field. So we have a current carrying a wire, carrying a current in this direction, and you got a B field going into the page. And we want to know the total force acting on this wire because of the current in this B field. Okay. Well, I could already tell you using the right hand rule, you have a current going this way, B field going down, and a force on this section of the wire is going to go this way. So that's going to, going to call that force one. On this side of the wire, so sorry, here's the current. On this side of the wire, you have a current going down in a B field, making a force on that particular part of the wire go this way. I'll call that RF2. And then for the third part, which is a bit more complicated, you have a current going in this circular pattern under the B field going that way, which makes the force go outwardly from the center of the circle. And we'll call that just kind of the collection of force, we'll call that F3s. So to analyze this equation, we have to break it down into these three particular isolated um, situations. So we're gonna have the total F and I'm gonna make it a uh, scalar F, uh, well, I'll make it a vector F, but we're gonna have to identify the directions of all these forces acting on this entire wire contraption. And it's gonna be three things. It's gonna be first be I for the first loop going from zero to L, that's the length from here to where the curve starts happening of B not DL. And uh, the reason why it's the cross product goes away is because the direction of the infinitesimal wire or the infinitesimal wires adding up is perpendicular to the B field, which goes into the page. So the cross product goes away and it becomes a maximized multiplication. This direction goes in the negative X direction. So we'll just call this a negative X because it pulls the entire contraption this way. Next, we can look at this particular part of the contraption. That's gonna be I, same current. Again, from zero to L, and it really doesn't matter. I can go from L to zero as well, and it's just going to play out um, in the direction of the force, but I would like to just make it a magnitude and you know, uh, manually uh, talk about the direction of the, of the force afterwards in the, um, in the unit vector. We're gonna have a B naught DL. In this case, it's gonna, the force is gonna pull in a positive X direction. So I'm gonna just literally just put positive X hat, okay? Like again, I went from zero to L because I only care about the magnitude. So it could go from L to zero, zero to L, doesn't matter. I just wanted the magnitude of the force and then I manually put in which direction it was gonna go just based on the situation. And lastly, the third, part, which is the more complicated part, is going to be the integral B naught DL. And there's no real good way of putting it. So I'm just going to say in this whole direction right here. So this is kind of where it just takes a lot of analysis to get there. So um, the limit of integration is going to be the entire loop. So I'm just going to go ahead and just say from zero to the end of the, the loop. So it's kind of all symbolic. It really doesn't mean anything mathematically. It's just so I know what's going on. Analyzing the first two terms, I see that the force acting on this bar going to the left and going to the right are gonna be the same force because you got the same length that's being integrated over the same B field over the same current. So adding these two up together will become zero. So the entire force is going to rely solely on the third term from zero to the other side of the loop, B naught. Again, it's all symbolic. You can use whatever symbols you want so that you remember what you're doing with the integration. And it's in the direction of all over the place. Well, the first thing I'm going to analyze now, since we've kind of made it a little simpler to one term, is that you got a force that's pulling in all directions. Now, if a force is uniformly pulling in all directions in a semicircle, so a half circle right here, you can see that the force pulling to the right and to the left are gonna cancel out. And then if you look at the very next infinitesimal 
uh, segment up, the x direction of the force pulling to the left is equal to the x component of the force pulling to the right. And then looking at the next uh, symmetry of pieces of the line above that, you'll see that the x component of the force pulling to the left is equal to the x component of the force pulling up. And this happens so forth all the way until you get up to perfectly vertical force, which pulls up and there's no x component. So therefore, you only want the y component of this particular term because the x components will cancel out. So looking at this phi, for example, this is a great way of, of using, utilizing the, the phi that's in the problem. The y component is going to be sine phi function of the entire term that simulates the force acting on this part of the loop. So you would basically just have to add in, well, multiply in sine phi to get only the y component of the force. So this equation now simplifies to i, and we'll take b naught out since that doesn't change with integration. From and we'll look at the limits later, sine of phi dl. Next, because we don't really know, I mean, the limits of integration will just be from zero to pi r. Let's go ahead and uh, make this a bit more friendly because we have a phi here, which is a variable. And then we have a DL, which is also a variable, um, an infinitesimal analysis of a variable. And they're two different things. So we need to get DL into a D phi or we need to get a phi in terms of L. Well. Um, I'm going to use a relation that I see here that an infinitesimal piece of this half circle is just going to be the radius of this half circle multiplied by phi. So essentially, you can say that dl, some infinitesimal piece of the semicircle, is r d phi, some small change in phi. You can now plug it in to the integral. And now it's going to be from 0 to pi, 0 and pi. And we're going to have r sine phi d phi. And that's basically replacing dl with r d phi. r comes out, analyze the integral of sine, and you're going to get Integral of sine is a negative cosine phi, and it's going to be from limits of 0 to pi. Let's go ahead and isolate this real quickly so we can analyze it. You got a negative here. Now, cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 0, so minus the next part, cosine of 0 is just a positive 1. So this becomes a negative 2 in here. A negative of a negative 2 is a positive 2. So the force here then ends up being B naught IR times two. And the direction it goes, it's gonna be in the positive Y direction. And you've analyzed that just on your own without having to use the math. Let's go ahead and write it a little nicer. F is two B naught RI in the positive Y direction. So I analyzed the three particular parts of this um, contraption using the force equation with current in the B field. Um, I saw that the two parts here, the two uh, line parts cancel out because the force is going opposite directions. So I analyzed the third term, realized that there are forces going away from the center of the circle in the third term here. The X components cancel out, leaving only the y component, which means only the sine phi of this third term. I added that here. And then I tra uh, did a transformation from a dl to some function of d theta and solved the integral with the limits in mind. And this is the answer I got.
So this is the force, the total force acting on this wire contraption in a B field, B naught with radius R with the current I.